What is up y'all and welcome back to another video. I'm the homie Koru. So glad to have you here with us today. We are going over our series on the Kaibalian. If you want to stick around and see all those videos, if you've liked the video so far, please be sure to like and subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. It really helps the channel. It helps other people hear about all these excellent and wonderful uh, things that I'm trying to share and get out there into the world for those who are ready to hear it. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and start and jump right in. We are on the first of the actual seven hermetic laws as written in the Kybalion. If you don't have a copy, pick it up, go over it, read it again and again and again, and let the ideas sink into your mind, into your subconscious and into your conscious. So what is the first law of hermetics? And it is the law of mentalism. All is mind, the universe is mental. And that's it. Um, we all have minds. We all have our minds that we use. I've illustrated in a previous video, you cannot do anything without first thinking about it, without first having it in your mind, putting it in your mind, using your will to have it happen. If it's as simple as moving your arms, speaking, using words, um, creating something with your hands, do, doing anything. You cannot do anything without first thinking about it. Your origin is mental. You are mental. Thus, the universe is mental. There is what we call in hermetics, the law, the all, <laughs> the law of mentalism, the all, the all is mine. And so our universe is a infinite living mind. That is the cornerstone at back of our reality the actual substance of our true reality is mind it is a singular mind and this is the most important law of hermetics this this law explains all the other laws all the other laws explain this law and we'll go in depth on all the other seven laws but the universe being mental is the cornerstone of hermeticism so this means that our universe is not physical as we think of it. And then we have arisen out of the physicalness and, and gained minds at some point throughout the evolutionary process or something like that. Or we were not, you know, the universe was not created and is not physical in that way. It is mental and all things come from and emanate from the will of the all by way of mentalism. So this means that in order to change our reality, we change it by a process called mental transmutation. By changing your mind, by changing your mentality, by changing your mental vibration would be the way that you would change our reality because you are mental, the, the universe is mental, and we are living in this sort of like fabrication of physicalness that is truly mental at its core. And the Kybalion speaks much of mental transmutation, applying higher laws to lower laws in order to transmute them. That's just the way that it goes. That's the way that the universe works. And it's done by transmuting your mind, by changing your own mind by power of will, by changing your mind and applying higher laws to lower laws. That is mental transmutation. And that is how we can affect change in our reality. True mental transmutation is magic. That's what we call magic. I've been talking about magic on this channel. Your belief, your mind, your mentality, your will, what the things that you create within your mind, all of that can be called magic. It can be called mental transmutation. It's all English words for the same phenomenon that happens in your mind and which happens mentally. And so this comes to another point where it separates us from the all in a certain sense which is that the all is permanent it is unchangeable it is eternal it is the world of being it never changes it is unchangeable and our world is the world of becoming why would you want to apply mental transmutation to become more than what you were to create change to create something new to create a different vibration from a previous vibration the all has nothing to do with this the all is everything it is unchangeable it never changes it is everything that is created and being and has its being is within the all and so it is it is 
the universe of being, we are the universe of becoming. So even though we have minds and we are mental and the all is mental, it's an important distinction to make that the all is unchangeable. Everything that some people say that everything that is going to happen has already happened. There is no concept of time within the all. Everything that already is, is our universe and that cannot be changed or, or, or you know, fundamentally at its most fundamental level, it cannot be changed. The all is infinite, it's unchangeable, it's eternal, and it is unknowable. We cannot know the all truly. It is an infinite living mind, which the hermitists call spirit. It is spirit. It is true spirit, the great spirit, the one spirit, the all, the, the I am that I am. And it creates mentally. So that comes to a divine paradox, what the hermitists call a divine paradox. If the universe is always changing, if our reality, if we are completely in a state of constant transmutation, constant changing, constant flowing, constant adjusting and, and becoming, and then the all is in a constant state of not changing, of never changing, of always being that which it is, then how, do, how does this get reconciled? And so most hermetists agree that this is a quality of the law of polarity, which we will, we will get to, which is that all paradoxes can be reconciled, all truths are half-truths. But the fact is, is that the universe is like a dream to the all. When we have dreams, we create these unreal realities. Where, where are your dreams? It sounds kind of silly, but where are your dreams? Where are they stored? Where are they? What is, what is, what are they made of? What is it? What is a dream? Yet we have them. They are completely real to us. Sometimes they're so real they impact us for years even. We have recurring dreams. We create these things mentally while we're asleep, right? And so the universe is like a dream to the all. It is creating mentally. This is by, you know, the universe, the all. I'll slow down a little bit. I'm super hype. <laughs> the all creates mentally. It does not create physical. It, it is not, the universe is not a physical creation of the all. It is a mental creation of the all. And it is changing and not permanent. But on the flip side, we experience the, our reality. We experience the universe. And to us, the universe is real. It is all that there is, truly. We cannot experience anything outside this reality, necessarily. Unless, of course, we are within our minds. We are dreaming. We are creating something mentally. But this universe that we're in is real, right? And we experience it as real, and it is real. It is not a dream. And this is a warning. This is a caution. Because sometimes people hear um, the the laws of... Um, Hermeticism, they read the Kybalion and they foolishly think that they can get away with things or try to affect things mentally and change the world around them and become, you know, go on their villain arc or whatever, kind of basically. But this is a warning of caution, is because understanding that the all is mental, that we are mental, and we can change the universe by way of mental transmutation, all of these are real things. It does not mean that our reality is not real, but also it is as a dream to the to the all because of the way that it has created and and manifested our reality so i could keep going back and forth on each of those because it is called the divine paradox so take that with a grain of salt let that simmer in your subconscious it is both at the same time and it is neither it is a paradox and we'll get to that in the law of polarity about how all of the paradoxes can be reconciled and all truths are but half truths. So moving on from that point specifically, the universe does create and it does, the, the all creates the universe mentally within its mind and it is held firmly in the mind of the all. If you try to hold something in your mind, first of all, that is how mental transmutation happens. Holding a vibration, an image, a, a, some, a symbol in your mind is how we create. Holding that image in your mind forces that mental transmutation process to happen. But 
When the all creates it, hold, it is holding our reality firmly in the mind of the all such that, like I was talking about in our reality, we have limits. Saturn rules over the limits of our reality, the boundaries of our reality. Our reality has rules, it has laws. Go to science, ask the scientists, they'd be more than happy to tell you about all of the laws that our reality has. And so our universe is being held so firmly in the mind of the all it is creating that layer of reality for us to experience within but changing it if you were to change it you would do it by the act of mental transmutation and so all is within the all and the all is within all so this is a huge tenet of the carbonian and of hermeticism and the law of mentalism so we'll go a little slower and we're gonna replace all with the universe and then keep the all, as in the background, the all, all is one, God, great spirit, whatever you wanna call it. So the universe is within the all and the all is within the universe or all that is in the universe. So it is this both at the same time type of thing. We are all experiencing reality within the all, within the mind of the all, and yet within all of us and within everything permeates the all. And it is this sort of like reflexive, reflective, back and forth patterning where you are not the all, but the all is within you. You can access the all within yourself mentally. We are all within the all mentally. Again, Divine Paradox starting to get a little repetitive back and forth, but it is important to understand and to meditate on these concepts, and they will bring a lot of clarity and a lot of understanding when meditated upon and when truly understood. All is within the all, and the all is within all. And the all is creating mentally, and is held firmly in the mind of the all, but a lot of people, if you get to the point where you're like, okay, I understand that, I'm down for that, I, I get it, mentality is what the universe is, right? A lot of people will come to the point where they start asking, okay, but why? If that's the case, and if the universe truly is a singular mind behind everything that is creating all of our universe, why is it creating it? And we covered this, I think a decent amount in the overview video, <clears throat> but and, and reading the Kybalion, again, this is a summary, this is a, go, we're going over each of the laws, I'm not skipping over anything or whatever, but I would highly encourage you to really go in depth, because they go in depth in the book, but the short answer is, it reminds me of the Hebrew word, Eheye. I'm saying that probably poorly, but Eheye, I am that I am. It is one of the names of God in the Hebrew uh, culture, I am that I am. Not I am God, not I am all, it is I am that I am. There is no other, there is no other thing, there is no, the, the all is all reason, the all is all law, the all is all creation, the all is all knowing, the all is all, it knows why and we cannot, we cannot know. Simply put and reduced, the all acts and creates because it acts and creates. There is no knowable reason to us humans. There is no knowable reason. <clears throat> and there is a story in um, the Kybalion where it talks about people were asking Hermes Trismegistus why. Why does the, the all create and what does this all mean? And when he was asked, he closed his lips tightly as if to say there is no reason. Or if there was a reason, you could not comprehend it. And that goes back to the hermetic axiom, the lips of wisdom are sealed except to the ears of understanding. So it can be taken that we cannot understand why the all creates, it simply does. And we are simply here. And my personal feelings about it also is that basically it would be unknowable to us and if you did get to a point where you did understand and know why the all creates and what it's creating for, you would have become so close to the all that you would practically become one with the all and then knowing it as a human would be completely, you know, completely um, 
oblivious. You wouldn't you wouldn't even be human anymore at that point. There would be no to know it here is to not be there and to know it there is to not be here basically. So knowing why is kind of a wild goose chase and I would I would highly recommend meditating upon the all being within the all and all within the all but trying to understand why it will not serve you long term if that is what you truly focus on and the real the real 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 application the practical application of the law of mentalism is understanding that the universe is mental we fundamentally are mental we are not physical we are minds that have bodies we are not bodies with brains or whatever we are mental we are mental creatures and we can cause change in ourselves and in the world by mental transmutation by changing our mind by changing our mental vibration so that is a very quick synopsis of the law of mentalism it is very very important it is the most important of the laws and it the other laws like i've said multiple times now basically explain kind of like you know the law of correspondence as above so below the all is within all all is within all is the all so you know it's all of the other laws basically are kind of like expanding and creating these dimensions to the all but the law of mentalism is all that there is the the all is mind and so i'd highly recommend taking some time just meditating on that even meditating on that hebrew word i am that i am the all is the all and then knowing that we can tr create change by mental transmutation change your mind change your beliefs change your mental vibration that is where true change comes from and so that is the way that we would understand the law of mentalism and apply it in our lives <clears throat> and so uh i will close with a one of the quotes from the uh quote true kaibalian which is while the all is in the all while all is in the all it is equally true that the all is in all to him that truly understands this this truth hath come great knowledge that's going to do it for today we're going to go on to the law of correspondence next thank you guys so much for sticking around and quick plug we're about actually two months away but i do have new music coming new music dropping stay tuned for that it's coming out on spotify october 20th it's called uh, lonely highway it's 17 songs i am super excited to get it out there and have it out so stay tuned for that we're going to do a video covering of that whole thing so i really appreciate all of you guys for watching and i will catch you on the next one peace